have your Bible, would you grab it? And let's go into God's word to Matthew chapter number five. We're in a sermon series called Glow. And in an effort to uh, really make the point of the message today, but hey, I'm not going to kid you. I figure there'll be a few more people on Facebook that tune in. The title of the message is Moonshine. Moonshine, yeah. Uh, You heard that right, Moonshine. And uh, uh, don't you know somebody's going to be flipping through churches and go, the sermon's Moonshine? I got to see what this guy's going to say about that. But uh, so, so yeah, the title's Moonshine, and hopefully in a few moments, I can flesh that out and make more sense of that title, Moonshine. If you have your Bible, we're in Matthew chapter 5. We've been talking about, again, our sermon series is Glow, so we've been talking about light. So we're in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. The Bible says, you are the light of the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, you, you. I'm talking about you. You. You are the light of the world. This is Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. This famous teaching he made from the Sermon on the Mount, I've been there four different times in my life. I've stood in that same beautiful, natural, geographical amphitheater right on the side of the Sea of Galilee. I've seen the city on a hill that can't be hidden. It's, it's up there. I, I've, I've been right there. And, I, and, and can you picture him? He's talking to his followers. This is Jesus Christ preaching the Sermon on the Mount. And he says to all those that were there that day, not just the 12, but all of them, he says, you are the light of the world. And that's a little confusing to me because last week we read in John chapter one that not only is Jesus God, but Jesus is the light of the world. I thought he was the light. And if Jesus is the light, how are we now the light? Who's the light? I need to figure this out. (laughs) Is Jesus the light or are we the light? (laughs) Because I don't know if we can both be the light. And the truth is, In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he said, you, talking about his followers, if you are here this morning and you say, I'm a Christian, then Christian, you're the light of the world. According to Jesus himself, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, verse 15, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a bushel or under a basket. Instead, a a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house, verse 16, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. We'll go back to verse 14 for just a second, if you would. And as we turn back to verse 14, I thought it was pretty like, whoa, Uh, last week, Jesus said that he is God. He also went on to say, according to the writer uh, uh, that we were studying John last week, that not only is Jesus God, but Jesus is life. Jesus is light. I'm going to clarify that for you in a few minutes. I'm going to give you a verse out of John in a few moments. Jesus is light. But now, wait, 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 wait. You? I mean, you. Me. I'm really the light of this world. I mean, this world is a pretty dark place. And in this dark world we live in, I'm the light, you're the light. Oh man, I need somebody to flesh this out a little bit for me. When I started studying this, obviously the word light became the big issue, the light. So I looked up that word in the Greek and in the Greek, that word is phos, phos. And the definition of phos means anything emitting or shining or glowing, anything emitting Light. Then, in other words, a lampstand, the lights in this building, you or I, we should be emitting the light of the Lord to a dark world, the sun out there, the moon. There's lots of examples of what it means, anything emitting light. But the interesting thing about the word phos in the Greek is where we get our word photo. Photo. The word photo comes from this Greek word. In another words, you and I should be a photograph of Jesus Christ. People ought to be able to say, hey, I want to see what Jesus looks like. I want to see what Jesus would do. What would Jesus do? Well, here's a photograph. Take a look. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember this. We're about to see an age test here. But when I was young, this miracle camera came out called a Polaroid. How many know what I'm talking about? And it was awesome. And it was awesome because prior to the Polaroid camera, you would have to go and and put your film in the camera store, whatever, to be developed. And they would have to develop your film and you would have negatives. Come on, how many old folks know what I'm talking about? 
But the Polaroid was amazing. You click this button, out the bottom, come on somebody, came this photograph. Now, it was not clear. When it would come out, it would not be a clear image. So we did, uh, at least this is what I was taught to do. When the picture comes out, you take it out and you do what? Come on, somebody. That's crazy. You wave it. We start fanning it. I, I mean, you know, there's some young people in this room going, what? What is he talking about fanning a photo? Now, folks, that did absolutely nothing for your photograph. I just want you to know. It, it, it didn't speed it up. It didn't make it happen any quicker, but somehow we thought this was the way to do it. We had fanned them photographs like crazy. The reality is the more that that photograph was exposed to the light, I'm preaching good right now, whether you know it or not, there's a spiritual application coming out of this. The more that photograph stayed in the light, the clearer the picture would become. Come on, church. And, and, and those things were amazing. And uh, I, I got to tell you that the disciples who were sitting there listening to Jesus teach this sermon on the mount, no doubt had to hear those words, you, present tense, you are, not you will be. Not, hey, one of, one of these days when y'all get good enough over here and when you figure out some of your issues in your, no, 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 no. He didn't say you will be the light of the world. He said you are. You are the light of the world. Now, how in the world are we the light, the photograph, the phos, how are we the ones who emit light or shine or glow light in this dark world? world. You know, there's somebody here in this room quite possibly that might say, Pastor Brad, a few years ago, I was a lot closer to God than I am right now. May I say this gently? Then a few years ago, you reflected the light of Jesus a little better than you are right now. Because the more you're in the light, the more you walk in the light, come on church, the more you can reflect the light of Jesus Christ. I want to try to help you with this today. And so one of the ways I want to do it is I want to ask this question. If you have your Bible, don't turn there. Just, just mark it maybe somewhere in your notes. Look at what John 8, 12 says. John 8, 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I'm the light of the world. Well, good grief. Jesus, are you the light of the world or are we the light of the world? Help me figure this out, church. You, we, it says, I, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Ah, I think there's an easy way to maybe explain this, and you just have to work with me. Please keep in mind, I'm married to a pre-K teacher for the last 32 years of my life. Therefore, putting on your thinking cap is quite normal to me. And some of you need to put on your thinking cap right now. Do a little imagination work with me here. For just a second, let's look at how the sun and the moon work together. Give me that first photo, if you would. It's an interesting phenomenon, and it's not new. Ever since the Lord said, let there be light, and place the sun in the sky, which, by the way, does not reflect the light of any other star or planet, the sun has its own light. Come on, somebody. The S-U-N has its own light. Nothing reflects off the sun. The sun is the light itself. But the moon, however, has no light. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? The moon emits zero light. There is no light that comes from the moon. The moon is a dark planet or, or dark star, if you will. But note this. When the sun shines on the moon, it reflects to the world. I'm preaching better than y'all are amen to me up here. I'm trying to use some illustrations here in the natural world that you and I can say, well, look at this. This is how God created it. This is how he made it. He sends the light of the sun to a star or a moon, the moon that has no light in and of itself, but it reflects the light of the sun to the world. And Church of Garden Valley, you're going to have to work with me. I don't think I've ever called you the moon, but you the moon. And so am I. As a matter of fact, we have no light in us at all. I mean, some of you may think you're a superstar. That's fine and well, good. You'll realize one day you're not. You'll realize that every one of us are normal. Everyone, nobody in this room is special. We're all fallen people. 
who don't emit light. I, I show darkness pretty well. I've done that quite a bit in my life. I haven't always shined the light of Jesus Christ like I should. As a matter of fact, it's almost more natural for me just to stay dark. It's interesting that if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves like the moon. Instead of emitting the light uh, that we should from the sun, let me show you this second photograph. Instead, the moon gets in the way of the sun. And when the moon gets in the way of the sun, don't shout me down now for sure, but I am preaching better than y'all are amen. When the moon gets in the way of the sun, you get an eclipse and the world stays dark. In case you're wondering how this eclipse is going to work on April the 8th, let me just be plain. The moon is going to get in the way of the sun, and the moon is going to start acting like it has its own light. Oh, my goodness. I wish a preacher was preaching this to me, because I'd sure amen him a little better than y'all. <laughs> oh, boy, I'd be like, amen, brother. Come on. You're preaching it straight. You're making sense up there. Now, whether I'm making sense or not, let me tell you how it's supposed to work. Go back to that first photo. Instead of the S-U-N, Jesus Christ, the S-O-N, is like that sun. And Jesus, he is the light. Come on, amen me, church. But the light, that's a better amen. Keep that up. But the, the amen, the, the Jesus, the, the light shines his light into our dark hearts. He illuminates our lives. He changes us. And then we become reflections of that light to a dying world. So let me ask you, moon, how well is your moon shining? This is a crazy sermon if I've ever preached one in my whole life, right? I mean, you know, but let me tell you this. We've already seen people come and get saved at this altar already this morning. We've seen some prodigals come home. Come on, somebody. How you figure? Because look, you know when you're getting in the way of the S-U-N, and you know when you're letting the S-O-N shine in your heart and in your life. And this is powerful to me. Because when I looked at this example, and it's just an illustration, come on, work with me. I'm just talking about the sun. When I looked at this illustration, I said, man, that's exactly what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be reflecting Christ to a dark world. Go to that second photo. But all oh, too often in my life, I have gotten in front of Jesus and said, don't look at him, look at me. Or let me, let me show you something about me. Or let me impress you. Come on, somebody. Let, let me be the star of the show. Let me be the one that brightens your day. And I have forgotten that there's no light in me except the light that he has put in me. He's the one that changed my life. He's the one that brought light into my heart and into my life. So, Pastor Brad, who's the light? Jesus is the S-O-N. And we, like the moon, are the ones that should be reflecting. Is everybody understanding this sermon so far? So I began asking myself this week as I was praying through this sermon, I was thinking about the eclipse that's supposed to be here on April the 8th. Again, the moon is going to get in between the earth and the sun, and the moon is not going to reflect the light like it should. Instead, it's going to block the light. A lot of people are coming because they want to see this eclipse. Well, church, there is an eclipse already happening. There's a lot of people who say they're Christians whose their light is not shining. Your, word, your mouth is talking, but your life is talking louder. You know I'm talking about second and first service. How many of y'all know that? I ain't talking about y'all. Eh, you know, hey, what can I say? Uh, I, hear my heart. Be honest with you. Sometimes I'm talking about me. When I was praying this week, saying, okay, Lord, I get it. I get it. These people are going to get it. We're supposed to be shining the light of Jesus in our lives. I said, Lord, am I doing a good job? And for all the scriptures in the Bible he could have took me to, he took me to Mark chapter 4, verse 19. Don't turn there, just read it. This is the parable of the sower and the seed. This is where the seed, the word of God, was spread into different soils, our hearts. And, and, and these different soils, certain things happen. And Jesus is explaining to his disciples the meaning of the parable of the sower. And one of his explanation says this right here, but all too quickly, the message, I don't want to change the word of God, but let me put it a different way. 
the light that came from God's word. How many know reading God's word can bring light into your life? It can bring knowledge. It can bring understanding. It can bring wisdom. It can bring peace. It can bring joy. It's amazing, the light, the word of God. So, so the message is crowded out by what? Three things. Don't put them on the screen yet. Let me just read them. The worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things so that, this text says, no fruit is produced. I could say it this way, so that we don't reflect the light of Jesus. Let's break those down for a minute because it's just what the Lord put on my heart. There's countless other ways we can get in the way of the S-O-N. But these are the three the Lord put on my heart. If you're taking notes, would you write this down? Number one, the worries of this life. My grandmother was a phenomenal worrier. I mean, no, that's not good. My mother followed suit with her. And according to my wife, I might be next in line. And personally, I believe, biblically speaking, worry is a sin. I believe worry is a sin. If you are worrying, I personally believe you're sinning. Now, let's be careful here, okay? I ride a motorcycle, I wear a helmet, but I do have to, come on, watch this, I have to concern myself with the other drivers. I understand there's some concern, but... Church, I'm talking about worry. When my boys were young, when they were little and they lived in my home, I didn't worry about them that much. I had control. I had this little leather strap right here holding these pants up. I'd show you, but I'd come on, somebody. And uh, I had this little leather belt, and that belt would come off, and I kept them in control. Matter of fact, watch this. I had spies all over Van, Texas. My boys didn't know it. They didn't know. They'd be like, Dad, you got eyes in the back of your head. I said, no, I don't. I got friends. Amen. But they're like, Dad, you know what's going on. Yes, I do. And I didn't worry because I knew where they were, when they were supposed to be. I didn't have no live 360. Come on, somebody. I got to tell you, now that they're grown men, they're out of my control. I'm, I'm worried about some of the things some of them are doing. Some of them better keep the nose clean, amen. I, I'm, 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 I'm concerned. Come on, I'm, I can't call it concern. It's worry. I let the worries of this life, whether it's money. Anybody in this place, don't raise your hand, been worried about money a lot lately? Anybody in this place been caught up, worried about your retirement, worried about who's going to be the next prayer, worried about this, worried about that, worried about... Folks... This is one of the concerns that keeps us from shining the light. You know, people need to see you and I trusting the God who is still on his throne. God is on his throne this morning. The Bible says that when a sparrow falls from a tree, I don't even care about no sparrow. No, I ain't lying to you. I don't care about no little sparrow. Okay? I don't care. God cares so much that when one falls dead, he knows about it. Anywhere on planet earth, he knows. How many know this? The Bible says every hair on our head is numbered. For some of you, I could keep up with the number. Come on, somebody. <laughs> for others of you, got a full head of hair. And my goodness, for God to know the very numbers of those hairs, that's how much he knows us. That's how much he knows every detail of our life. Forgive me, Lord, for not reflecting Jesus by trusting you. I'm on preaching to somebody right now. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I haven't trusted you to come through, Amen. to take care of me, to take care of my family. Forgive me, Lord, when this was a chance I could have reflected the light of Jesus. But instead, watch this church, I got in the way of the light. Amen. Said, I'll do a better job fixing this than you. If they, people would just do it my way, it would be the right one, oh, man. I wonder how many times I could have reflected, like the moon, that I could have reflected the light of Jesus. Instead, I didn't trust him. Church, he's seated on his, seated on his throne this morning. 
you can trust him. Don't let the worries of this life block the S-O-N from shining in your life. Number two was the lure of wealth, or another translation says the deceitfulness of wealth. I wrote this in my notes. Money has a way of making us think the more we make, the happier we'll be. I don't know how many of you have seen a documentary about those people that win the lottery. Those people are miserable human beings. They really are. They immediately go into hiding. The minute they win the lottery, they go into hiding, usually from their own family. Hello. And then they go into hiding from their church friends. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> then they go into hiding from people in general. Why? Why? Oh, man, I, you got all that money. You got to loan me. You got to borrow me some. You got to help me out. I, I would say this. Money's not wrong. Money's not good. Money's not bad. Money is neutral. I don't know if you've ever been taught that, but it's a fact. Money's not good. Money's not bad. It's neutral. The same money that I buy, I don't buy. The same money you could buy illegal drugs with. is the same money you can buy prescription drugs that could heal someone. It's not the money, it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And I would say today, money can get in the way of the Lord shining through you and I. I think there's moments, come on, I'm speaking to somebody in this room, maybe me, but maybe somebody else. There's times when God wants us to trust him. And it's not so much about us sometimes. That's been a hard lesson for me. I'm like, God, why are you doing this to me? And sometimes he's like, Brad, I ain't, I'm, Brad, you're just the moon. I'm doing this so you'll shine for other people who can't understand or who don't see it. I think every now and then God allows you and I to go through things so that people will see us trusting God. I trust money more than I trust God, then you got something out of order in your life. And trust me, you've brought an eclipse to this world. You are an eclipse right now. You have blocked the S-O-N. And you need to step back, get out the way. Come on, moon, get out the way. Let the sun reflect off of you. Number three was this, the desire for more stuff, or the one translation said other things. And Man, this can just, I, this is a true story. I, I, I was talking to somebody and I said, hey man, where have you been? And I, I mean, I hadn't seen him in about two weeks, okay? Just a couple weeks, three weeks maybe. I said, man, where have you been? I've been missing you. They said, Pastor Brad, I've been doing some other things. You know, I get that, I get that. I, I do other things, but how many of you know other things has a way of taking the place of God? And, and the next thing you know, it, it can be anything, but it, it, other things can just really get in the way. And uh, that picture of the moon getting in the way of the sun and the sun being hidden and an eclipse happening. I, I'm asking you this morning as I prepare to close, where are you at in this story this morning? Are you letting the sun shine through you, off of you, from you? Because you know, a city on a hillside, it can't be hidden. Let me ask you this question. I'd love to do this. It'd be fun just to do it. But if I showed up at your work tomorrow, if I showed up at wherever you're at tomorrow, and, 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 you, and you were over there, and I was with some of your coworkers, and I went, hey, you see that old boy over there? And they looked at you. Or maybe it was one of you ladies, one of you ladies. I'm like, you see that godly woman over there? You see that woman of God? You see that man of God? I wonder if your coworkers would be like, where? Who are you talking about? Ain't nobody up here, man of God. No, no, they may say, they, no, man. What would your coworkers say? Would, would they say that the words that come out of your mouth are not that, of, that are not godly? Come on, somebody. Would, would they say that your actions speak louder than your words? Your words say this, but the truth is, you bring in darkness everywhere you go. You, you're not shining his light. Man, I don't know about you, but I want to shine the light of Jesus. Our world is darker than it's ever been before. But listen, church, Jesus is ready to shine brighter than ever before. And his light hasn't changed. 
It's the moon that needs to get in the right place. Does this make sense? When, when the moon's in the right place, the sun will reflect. Would you bow your head with me? Father, this morning, I, afternoon, I have to say I'm, I haven't always been a good source of light. With your head bowed, can I tell you a quick story? Your head bowed for just a moment, ready to do a reflection in your own heart. About three weeks ago, the Lord began dealing with me severely that I needed to go and apologize to some people. And I didn't just go apologize to them. Listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. I sat down and wrote letters to every single one of them. And I wrote quite lengthy letters, multiple pages. And I went and I sat down with these individuals at different times. And I read my letter to them and I paused at certain places and gave them a chance to reflect on how that made them feel. I gotta tell you, I have never been so humbled. It, it, to be honest, it was a little bit humiliating. I mean that in a good way. I mean, I, man, old Brad Williams wasn't standing there saying, I'm full of pride. I was humble. Listen to me, church. I don't think I've ever been more like Jesus than when I humbled myself. Had to say, and Jesus hadn't had to ask anybody to forgive him. That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm not perfect. He's the sun. I'm like the moon. I just reflect his light. And I had to go and apologize to a group of people. Individually, one-on-one. -on -one, one couple I went to, I said, I just want to apologize. I didn't handle that situation right. I wasn't right. You know, when I walked away from that, someone said, Pastor Brad, I've never seen you be more like Jesus than when you humbled yourself, admitted you were wrong. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody right now in this room that your pride will get in the way. Your ego, your arrogance, you think that you're always right. And in reality, here's what you really are. You're blocking the light. Pastor Brad, that seems so harsh. I don't want it to be harsh. But I don't want us to have an eclipse. I want the world to see Jesus. With your head bowed, don't raise your hand, but answer in your heart. How well are you shining for Jesus right now? I'm not asking if you're perfect. None of us are perfect. I'm not asking you to be super critical of yourself. Well, come on, we can be our own worst enemies. But on the same hand, don't let yourself off easy. If there's some areas of your life right now, what's that worry look like in your life? Would, would someone say that about you? Oh, they're just a worrier. They worry about everything. That's not a good compliment. That, that, in my opinion, that's a very negative thing. The Bible's clear we shouldn't worry. I, I hope you ha have a job. I hope you're working. I hope you're trying to increase your income, but has money become your God? What about the pursuit of other things? There, there's so many things that want to get in our way. They, they, they want to fill our lives with their light, and we get out of focus. We don't keep Jesus as the main source of our light. So this morning, I may have said something that pricks your heart. How well are you reflecting the light of Jesus? If you're here and you're not a Christian, then let me just point blank say it a different way. Would you look up here, everyone? Ephesians 5.8. Ephesians 5.8 says, for once you were full of darkness. If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, that verse is not for you. If you're not a Christian, this verse is not for you. If you're not a Christian, you're still full of darkness. Maybe you've been asking, man, I wish my life could change. It can. You got to open up the windows, let the light in. Would you stand with me all over this place? Would you look at this verse with me, Christians? 
If you're a Christian here this morning, for once you were full of darkness. Come on, how many besides me can say amen? That was my story. That's my story right there. <clears throat> there was a time in my life I was full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. But here's the question for us Christians. So are we living as people of light? Or every now and then are we getting in the way of what Jesus is trying to do to us, through us? Are we getting in the way of what he's trying to do for other people? And we're trying to fix the people around us when in reality, we ought to just shine the light of Jesus. With your head bowed, would you consider these words? Father, this morning, I want to thank you for these that have gathered for this third service of the day. Regardless of what times stay the same or change, you never change. I want to thank you that you are full of light today. I want to thank you, Jesus, that your light shines day or night, a city on a hill that can't be hidden. Lord, I want to ask you to examine my heart right now, our hearts. If there's anything in our hearts that is keeping you from shining, and I pray, Lord, you deal with that right now. Come on, for some of us, it's worry, fear, anger, jealousy, bitterness. Come on, there's too many things for me to mention. But if the Holy Spirit's pricking your heart, then you need to listen to him. Prayer partners, can you come on down here, pastors? Prayer partners that are in the room. And by the way, prayer partners, pastors, ministers, if you, if you come to this altar to help me pray, but the truth is you're the ones that need prayer, then be man or woman of God enough not to pray with other people. You get down and lead the way. You get down and you seek the Lord first. If it's you, if, if this applies to you. Heavenly Father, we're gonna to respond to what we've heard. Church, I don't expect every person in this auditorium to come running to this altar. I don't. But those of us who need it, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you're like, Pastor Brad, I'm not a Christian. I know I'm not living for God. I'm not even close to living for God. I used to be close. Now I'm back. So whatever your story is, if you're not where you need to be with Christ, get out of that, get out of the way, and let him in.